in the latest React and Next.js, there is a new hook called use action state. And I think what you see here is going to be the primary way that you're going to work with server actions, right? So you're going to pass a server action to this use action state hook, and it will give you a pending state and also an error state and also the actual action that you should pass to the form in this case. Now I'm calling it error here, but what you actually get here is whatever you return from your server action. Right now, typically I'm returning something from my server action if there is an error. So I might as well just call it error. That's what I did here. But technically it's going to be whatever you return from your server action. Now this also works outside forms. I'll show that in a second. But the benefit is now if I submit this form, if I just say test and I click on submit, you can see I have a loading state here and then I get my test here. Right. So previously you may be using use form state and then if you wanted a loading state well you could use the use form status hook right but if you remember this does not work at this level so you kind of awkwardly had to create a new component for the button here for example and then in that component you could use this hook so it was quite clumsy to get a loading state so we don't need to do that anymore because this hook will give you a spending right here and i can use that here as we just saw and actually this is just the same as this one just with a different name because this name was confusing because well it's not only for forms right so i can use this whenever i'm using a server action or any action and right? so i can use this also outside forms so this is a more appropriate name and there's actually also a react hook form which actually also has use form state as a hook so it's also nice that this now also has a different name all right let's actually take a look at the server action and i'll walk you through the example here but before we do that let's talk about today's sponsor let's say i have some dashboard and here i want to display some analytics for the user and that's where the sponsor of today semaphore comes into play so here in semaphore i can create a dashboard right which is just a bunch of cards and let's say i end up with something like this which is just a bunch of cards in a certain layout and each card displays some data so if i want to change anything about this card i can click on this icon and here i can configure everything for just this card i can set up a data source and here i can actually write sql to get the data and very cool you can now also write python here so you can manipulate the data that you get back right here as well so whatever we do here will ultimately result in this card cool so now i want to display this in my actual app so what i can do here is i can go to react code here and semaphore will give me a react component that i can just include here in my app which is very simple we just have a sidebar right and a header right here and i want to have the dashboard right here so i only have to include the semaphore component here and add the imports and now if i go back i have all of these analytics right here in my own dashboard and if you saw my other video you know you can do a lot of cool things here so very slick let me actually zoom in a little bit so we can configure this to look and behave just like we want so it fits in nicely within our app we can now even manipulate this by adding our own component for example let's say the user is looking at this and they're looking at machines here and has a very low order amount so we we want to give the user the ability to contact whoever is in charge of the machines department right so we want to render like a button here so what we can do here we can go to this component and we can just add some custom cards right these are all just cards so here i have my array of custom cards i just have to give the id of the card i want to change and i'm going to add this component here which i call dialog button let me actually put that button here in the same file okay so here i'm just using some chat cn components and now when i go back you can see we have a button here in the footer of this card so now the user can click on this and they can actually perhaps send a message to the machines department so they can ask why the orders are down let's say what i can now also do is i can push this back to semaphore including our custom button here so i can share it with other people so i can say semaphore init that will give me a config file and then i can say semaphore publish so now if i go here under apps i have a data app here if i click here i now have my whole app here on the semaphore domain essentially hosted by semaphore for me including the custom button that i added as this makes it very easy to share with other people as sort of like a data app right so very slick i would say check out semaphore you can find a link in the description the features that i just showed you were just the basics you can do much more so i would say check out semaphore's website you can find a link in the description and make sure you sign up for the waitlist and before i continue here let me just quickly give you a recap of all this server action stuff so let me just remove everything here for now also this okay so now we just have our form and it's sitting on a page let's take a look so on the page we have this h1 that's what we see here and then i have this list of tasks that i'm mapping over right so here i'm getting the tasks from my database but there's nothing in the database yet so that's why we don't see anything here so that's what we're doing here and then here we have the form right i can just fetch data like this in a server component you can just do async away like that and then here i have my form 
right? That's what we see here. Now, traditionally, if you would want to submit a form like this, what you would do is something like on submit, and then you would run a function. And then here you would make some kind of fetch call to your backend. You would create an API endpoint on your server. Then you would perhaps make a post request. You would grab the data from the form and then send it to your server side. And then on your backend, you actually had to make sure you actually exposed an API endpoint at this route, right? So then you had to make sure you have to correct route, right? Actually quite a lot of boilerplate and it's actually quite messy. But now what we can do is we can use the action attribute instead. And here we can specify a so-called server action. An action is just a function essentially. And a server action is just a function that runs on the server. I like to create a separate folder for them. And then here I have my file with my actions. So here I just have one for creating a task. This is a function that runs only on the server. It receives the form data, right? So when I submit here, I do need to specify the name of that server action, right? The name here is create task. That's what I'm specifying here. And so then React will make sure that when I submit it, the form data will be sent to my backend. And then here we can get that content. And here I can insert it into my database. And I have other videos on server actions. That's also part of my React and Next.js course. And so that's how server actions work in a nutshell. That's so very beneficial because now we don't have to create our a whole API endpoint on our server. That API endpoint is generated for us automatically, you could say. And also there are some progressive enhancement features here. So this can work even without JavaScript enabled. So if I save now, and if I submit test here, now we don't see it here yet because now it's just been inserted. If we want to see it on the page, we do need to fetch it again from our database. So let me actually refresh here. You can see now I have test here, right? So you can see if I do test two and refresh, you can see I get that. If I don't want to refresh and I want to immediately view the update here, I can actually also use revalidate path, which is pretty cool because then if I now save here and now just say test three, if I submit here, I don't even need to refresh. It will automatically uh, re-render actually this this component. And, and so we will see the update here even without refreshing. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now there are two issues here. We typically also want to see a loading state, right? So here, if I now submit and let me actually add some delay here because this is all simulated locally in my computers, but that's not going to happen like that in production. So then, so I just added this line here, which will just sleep for one second, essentially. So now if I submit here, you can see I'm waiting and waiting. I don't see a loading indicator, right? So we want to have a pending state. And also if something goes wrong here, for example, here where we try to insert it into our database, if that goes wrong, we would also like to display an error, right? So an error state. You could use the use form state hook for that, but if you want a loading state or pending state, then you had to use another hook, use form status. But this hook doesn't even work in this component. You actually have to create a new component that is a child here to make that work. So this hook helps you with the return value essentially from what you return, that's the state. But this name of the hook makes it sound like you can only use it in forms, but that's not the case. You can actually also use it outside forms. So this hook essentially has been renamed to use action state, which also gives you a pending state. So let me now show you the cutting edge right now as of recording. So let me walk you through the example that I have set up here. I'll show you the server action I'm using here as well, right? So I just have to pass a, an action here. And an action is actually just a function, right? So an action can be a server action, which is just a function that runs only on the server, right? Use server here, I put it in a different file, doesn't matter. I could also define it in here. I put it in a different file and I add use server here. And what this server action will do is it will receive the form data, right? So when I submit here, since I added this action here to the action attribute, the form data is automatically sent to my server side and I receive it right here. I can get the actual content from that input and I can actually insert it here into my database. And by the way, you may have noticed that we have another parameter here. We'll talk about that in a second. And so this is a server action. There is also a client action, just a function that runs on the client. I could technically use the hook for that as well, but here we have a server action and this hook will give me the pending state as it's being invoked, right? So as we are waiting, it will. I can disable the button here and I can show loading, right? So I can say test two, I can submit and we see loading dot 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 and then it's removed again. It gives me this action that I actually need to pass to the form, but then it also gives me an error state or not necessarily an error state. It's just, we can just call it state because that will just be whatever you return from that function. So here, for example, I'm returning something typically if there is an error, right? So for error states, typically you are going to return something. So I think most of the time you're gonna use this for an error uh, situation. So I'm just gonna call it error and I'm just gonna render a paragraph. 
right? So here, what I would like to do is now if I make a mistake here, let's see, let's say I make a typo here. So something should go wrong. We should go into the catch block here and we should see something being returned from that server action. And that's what will render a paragraph here. So let's see what happens now if I say test three, if I click submit, and now we get an error here. And this is all progressively enhanced as it's called. So what that means is that this should also work if JavaScript is disabled. So let me actually disable JavaScript here. I can say JavaScript, disable JavaScript. Okay, so now I can see, and now if I make this a little bit bigger and let's actually log something in the server action so we can see if we indeed are still invoking the server action with the content. Right. So let's see if that still works. We're still having this error, right? So we should still see an error. So now let me open up the terminal here. So now I'm going to try this again. I just refreshed. So the error is gone. But now if I try this again, test three, and then we see an error occurred, right? So this still seems to work with the JavaScript disabled as well. I think that's pretty cool. Let me refresh here. All right. And let me remove this. Let's actually make it work properly here. Okay. So this is a server action and we can use server actions in forms. And some people think you can only use them in forms. So that's not the case. You can actually use them everywhere. So for example, maybe next to these tasks, we also want to render like a delete button. And so we probably want a way of deleting them, right? So let's actually create a server action that deletes tasks here, right? So I will just rely on Copilot here, right? So we just need to pass in the ID, right? So we want to use this server action somewhere. It's not going to be in the form. It's going to be next to these ones. So let's actually open up the page and see what I did there. This is the page. So here on the page, I just have this H1. That's what you see here. And here I'm getting all of the tasks for my database mapping over here, right? So that's why we see them right here. And here we have that form. So now what we want to have is next to each piece of text here, we also want to have let's say like a delete button. So just something like this, I added a space here. And now when we click it, we actually want to invoke a server action and we can do that. We don't need to wrap it in a form. We could do that, but we don't need to wrap this in a form. I could just say on click and here I want to invoke my server action, which I called delete task. I just need to pass the ID of the task and let me actually import this. Now here I'm going to get an issue because I'm trying to hook into an event right, a click event, but that happens only in the browser as I click in the browser. And this component is a server component only runs in the server. So it cannot hook into events like that in the browser. Here we need to refactor this into a separate client component. Let's do delete button TSX. And let me just paste that right here. I do need to import the server action. I can also invoke a server action without that hook. And we do need the ID here. So let's pass that as a prop like this. Okay. And then here I can change this with the component that we just created. Uh, I do need to call that delete button and then here import this. All right. So now I can remove this import from here. Now we have our delete button here, but it still needs to become a client component. So we can just easily do it like that. Okay. So now you can see we got rid of the error. So this is how you could invoke server actions. You don't need to use this hook, but if you want to have a loading state and, and you want to deal with error states easily, you probably want to use the use action state hook. Right, so we need to pass two things, the actual server action, that's delete task in this case, and then also the initial state of that action. And what it gives you are the following. So we get what I like to call an error state, but it could be anything that you're actually returning from the server action. It's just that commonly you are actually returning an error in case there is one. So in many times you're only gonna use this for an error state. Here we will actually get the actual action that you need to invoke then. Right, we can use that as pending here, for example, to just say deleting dot dot dot. Right, so now you, I do need to invoke invoke this by using this, right? So instead of using the lead task, I do need to use the action here. Okay. So now if I try deleting it, let's click on the first one. You can see deleting dot dot dot, and then it actually deletes it. So it also works outside forms. So very powerful hook. I think it's going to be the primary way that you're going to deal with your server actions. Now you may also have noticed that we have another parameter here. And honestly, I'm not really a big fan of this. It makes it look a bit clumsy, but the idea seems to be to make this more in line with the use reducer hook or like a reducer, you also have some kind of previous state like that, right? So traditionally with a server action, you would just create a function with a normal well, parameter like this. 
But then if you take that server action and you pass it to use action state, it will get another parameter here that you do need to add here. Otherwise the form data here will not be what you what you expect. So you do need to add something here. And this is the well the previous state essentially, right? So remember with this hook, you're keeping track of some state, right? That's actually what you get here, right? State. Now commonly that's going to be just some error state, right? So I'm not really returning anything in success case here, only when there's an error. So I might as well just call it error. That's what I did here but this could be anything and initially I don't have a meaningful state here so I added null here but maybe we want to keep track of for example how many tasks the user has submitted right so in my view this is mostly useful if you actually want to keep track of some history so maybe in the success case we also want to return uh, something right so instead of an error state maybe we may want to keep track of how many tasks the user has submitted something like that right so now initially it would be zero right and this would be some state let me actually comment this out because now it's not going to be the error now we're going to keep track of some number here so in the success case we need to increment that right so then here what you would return is previous state plus one and let me actually log that previous state so we can actually see what's going on. A little bit complex here. Let me just log this and you'll see it's not that. And so let me just log that quickly. I'm going to refresh here. And so initially now, if I submit the form, we're going to get zero here, right? The previous state is zero. If I keep submitting things, if I now press submit, let's see, now I get one here. And if I do another one, submit, I get two here. Right? But basically we can keep track of the state so we can even output. Now, if I just rename this to just state we would actually output how many times the user has submitted a task. So a little bit complicated, but that is how the previous state works. Right, so initially it's gonna be zero, and then here we get zero, we increment it, and then the next time it's submitted, you get one. And then you get two and three. Right, it's a little bit tricky here. And honestly, I have not seen really great use cases for this yet. And also about the types, by the way, if you watch my channel, or you're in my React and Next.js course, you know that we cannot just input to actually be form data. We want to do validation here with salt, for example. And it seems to be the same for this parameter as well, in case you're going to use that. But at least it's now very nice that we now have one hook here that will give us a loading state and also, well, the actual return value which most commonly is going to be used, I think, for the error state, right? So that cleans things up a little bit. And if you're a little bit confused, I think that's totally normal. There's lots of new things going on here. So if you really want to master modern React and Next.js, I highly recommend you go through my professional React and Next.js course. You can find a link in the description. I'm Wesley, by the way. I'm a brand ambassador for Kind. It's a paid sponsorship, but I had a great time working with them so far. And I think they have a wonderful solution for authentication in your apps. So also check them out. You can find a link as well. And then I want to thank you for watching the video. Hope to see the next one. Have a nice day. Bye.